my journey of discovery with uh, Kent Haruf was actually rather late in life and one that I'm therefore slightly embarrassed about how late I engaged with his writing. And I think um, there's a lot more of me uh, three years ago, a lot more people like me three years ago, uh, still to discover Kent. And I think that's something possibly due to the quality of his writing. Um, there's a phrase in the new book uh, where the preacher is looking for the precious ordinary in, um, uh, in people. And there is a quality about Kent's writing, which is his discovery of the precious ordinary, which can often be underestimated. Um, he makes the ordinary, in fact, extraordinary. Um, I discovered Kent when this novel, Benediction, was submitted to Picador by its American publisher, Knopf. Um, we'd published his previous novels uh, before my time, and it had been quite a while since his last novel had been published. I mentioned it to a few people in, uh, in, in Picador, and suddenly I realized that this was something I had to take incredibly seriously, and I had to deal with very quickly, because Otherwise, I would lose all the respect of my colleagues. Uh, Kent was hugely loved, and his writing even more so. The um, Benediction is the third part of what is you could call a loose trilogy, um, all set in uh, a fictional town, Holt, in Colorado. They are beautiful books, beautifully written, uh, with the most beautiful titles, um, Plain Song, Eventide, and Benediction, and even those poetic titles give a sense of the um, qualities of his writing. So I read Benediction uh, overnight, thought it was an extraordinary work, realized that we had to keep Kent at Picador, and we had to do justice to this novel and indeed to the, the previous novels and really find him the readership. The three novels that we've published as part of this trilogy alongside his other writing um, do have this strange, quiet, cumulative effect. And this is a moment in Kent's writing, I think, there is a moment of resolution and reconciliation. This is what this novel is about. And um, this may not be his last novel set in this particular fictional area, but it's a, if it is, it's a novel which perfectly resolves the conflicts and the characters and the stories that he began in plain song and continued in eventide. Yeah, there are great there are great trilogies in American writing, like um, Cormac McCarthy's Border Trilogy, uh, and there are writers who have captured place uh, so strongly uh, uh, in the manner of um, Richard Ford or Annie Prue, and I think that. Um, Kent has achieved this, and there is a, a resolution with this third novel that is incredibly powerful and, and deeply moving. I think um, there is, a, there is a, an awareness in Britain that there are you know, some great American writers and Picador publishers, writers who are so uh, strongly individualistic in their writing. Uh, from Brett Easton Ellis to Cormac McCarthy to Don DeLillo. You always know you're in their, their land. Um, when someone is so deliberately unflashy, it is harder to find, their, uh, find them the readership they deserve. Um, and previously, we've relied on a bit of the, um, uh, uh, the fallout of an American prize or two. But actually, to have something bringing these writers um, to the center of the British literary world is hugely important. And um, Kent's book, Benediction, uh, I think fits this prize perfectly, perfectly in that all the books are different. They're all utterly true to what they're trying to do in form and in style uh, and in the way they tell their stories. Um, it's been absolutely crucial to um, our whole strategy and, um, and I hope our success in bringing Kent to some to a much wider readership uh, that, uh, that he's been recognized by this prize. Absolutely, that is the, the ability to take an ordinary life and make it uh, extraordinary is, is the real skill. I think uh, uh, there's been an, a novel that uh, Vintage cleverly uh, have, have reissued and, and brought to a, a readership stoner. 
Uh, and it, start, it reminds me a lot of, of Kent Harus' benediction. Uh, they both start with the idea that uh, they are going to tell you the story of a life which will probably be forgotten. It really is only in these novels that these ordinary lives get remembered. In Stoner, it's the, um, uh, the teacher's life that um, uh, he will know, the, the school will forget about him. Uh, school, university, I better start university. that again. Um, in Stoner, it's the, uh, it's the teacher's life that, and the university will soon have forgotten him. In um, Benediction, they talk of the, the gravestone and, and that will be the last memorial of, of Dad Lewis, a, a strong, powerful, uh, moving uh, character, but one who is reaching the end of his life and who Kent has decided to, whose story Kent has decided to, um, to make li living. Um, so the, um, this fictional landscape that, that Kent has created in, in Holt, Colorado is very much one of ordinariness. You, in many ways, this is the most ordinary of, uh, of, of leading characters in that it's, he's, a, he's a shopkeeper. In many ways, you don't get more ordinary than a shopkeeper. It's not uh, the wild west of Colorado. It's the small town. Uh, it's a man who's built up his hardware empire. Uh, it doesn't seem necessarily this, the stuff of the great American novel. Um, but what Kent has done is he brings the lives of those characters together, of men, and in this book in particular of women. Um, this is by far the most um, powerful in its depiction of, of the relationships of women of all of Kent's books. And for that reason, I'm particularly pleased that it's getting this wider recognition. What I'm looking for in, in a novel, but actually it's also what I'm looking for in the nonfiction and the poetry that, uh, that we publish at Picador, is uh, the telling of a story, but also the way the story is told. So what we're looking for is the voice of the storyteller. Uh, and as I say, that can be the voice of a, a nonfiction writer like um, John Ronson or Oliver Sacks or William Fiennes, or uh, a landscape that is completely and utterly identifiable as that of a writer. The ability to do that, which uh, Alan Hollinghurst does or Edward St. Auburn does of our British writers, uh, is uh, something that I think separates um, fiction or writing uh, from literature. Uh, and I think that is what, uh, interestingly, has been recognized by the different voices that the eight writers on the folio shortlist uh, all show. Mm -hmm. All totally different, but all uniquely confident in their own voice and uniquely successful.